Good day, BMH. Today, we're going to discuss the different levels of the Philippine local government units. We're also going to present the various leaders of the LGUs and the qualifications for each position. But before we can discuss everything, we first have to know what exactly is a Philippine local government unit. According to Atienza, the Philippine Local Government Unit is the lowest elected territorial organization within a state. Its main goal is to serve the people in their locality. It is stated in the Local Government Code of 1991 that the local government shall enjoy local autonomy and be given more powers, authority, responsibilities, and resources by the states. These are achieved through the process of decentralization of the government. The local government has four primary rules. First, efficient service delivery. Second, management of the environment. Third, economic development. And fourth, poverty alleviation. The local government has seven functions. The first is the legislative function where the LG officials enact ordinance and implement them within their jurisdictions. An example ordinance would be Ordinance 1361 or the Anti-Littering Ordinance, which help keep the city's surroundings clean. Other functions of the local government are quasi-judicial, taxation, local budget preparation, exercising the power of eminent domain, and maintenance and protection of public property. There are three levels in the local government. Provinces, municipalities, and cities, and barangays make up the local government unit. The province is the highest level local government. It is the intermediate level between the national government and cities or municipalities. The province is governed by a governor and a legislature known as the Sangguniang Panlalawigan or Provincial Council composed of board members. Did you all know that there are 81 provinces in the Philippines? The city and municipalities are the basic units of local government. There are two categories of cities, component and independent. Component cities are geographically and politically part of the province. Independent cities are geographically part of the province but politically independent from it. The city mayor heads both cities. The municipality is under the jurisdiction of the province and a municipal mayor heads it. For its legislative body counterpart, municipalities have the Sangguniang Bayan, while in cities, the legislative body is called the Sangguniang Panlungsod. The last level of the local government is the barangay, which is a sub-municipal unit. Barangays can be further divided into sitios and parukhs. The barangay captain or punong barangay heads the barangay along the Sangguniang Barangay composed of the captain, barangay councillors or barangay kagawads, and the Sangguniang Kabataan chairman. The barangay makes it possible for face-to-face -face interaction between the people and the leaders. Here's an interesting fact. The president can only supervise the local government not control it. The president cannot entirely interfere with the local government affairs. Now, the local government unit has its different challenges. First, the geographical setting makes it hard for the LGUs to govern their territory, and it's especially hard for them to reach the people in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. Another challenge is the budget, since our current government system makes our provinces allocate a huge cut of their incomes to the national government. This leaves provinces with not enough money to do projects. Last challenge would be competence. This can be a lot of things. Incompetence can be a result of a job mismatch or nepotism. There are too many people, making it hard for leaders to govern the area. We now go over the local government leaders and the qualifications of their positions. First is the governor. 
As mentioned earlier, the governor heads the province. He also exercises general supervision and control over all programs, projects, services, and provincial government activities. The vice governor is the presiding officer of the Sangguniang Panlalawigan. He or she also appoints officials and employees of the Sangunian, assumes the office, and exercises powers and duties of the governor in the event of a permanent vacancy. The qualifications to become a governor and a vice governor are the following. He or she must be at least 23 years of age on election day, must be a citizen of the Philippines, a registered voter in the barangay, municipality, city, or province where he or she proposes to be elected, able to read and write Filipino, English, or any other local language or dialect. Next is the mayor. The mayor can either be a municipal or city mayor, depending on where they are. The mayor carries out emergency measures for disasters and calamities, orders the demolition of illegally constructed houses, buildings, or other structures in accordance with the law, and visits barangays at least once every six months to know and address the concerns of the officials and inhabitants. Here's an idea of what the mayor can do. So as you know, the pandemic happened, and what the late mayor of Cebu City did at that time was issue an executive order. This executive order number 64 was crucial in preventing the spread of the COVID-19 in Cebu City. If the mayor hadn't issued the executive order, then everyone would have been infected by now. The vice mayor is the presiding officer of the Sangguniang Panlungsod. He or she can appoint officials and employees of the Sangunian, assumes the office, and exercises powers and duties of the mayor in case of permanent vacancy. The qualifications to become a mayor and vice mayor are the following. Must be at least 21 years of age on election day, can be elected to a maximum of three consecutive terms, registered voter in the city where he or she intends to be elected, and others as stated in the law. We also have the councillors. They approve ordinances, pass resolutions, adopt measures to protect the inhabitants, assist victims in the event of disasters or calamities, and provide legal assistance to barangay officials. The qualifications to become a councillor are the following. Must be a citizen of the Philippines, registered voter in the city where he or she intends to be elected, resident of the city where he or she intends to be elected, and still others as mentioned in the law. The barangay officials govern the barangay. They promote peace and order by settling disputes between people, formulate measures to eradicate drug addiction, promote the well-being of the youth and women's rights, and maintain barangay-owned properties and infrastructures, cleanliness, and beautification of the barangay. An elective local official must be a citizen of the Philippines, a registered voter in the barangay, municipality, city, or province where he or she proposes to be elected, a resident therein for at least one year at the time of the filing of his or her certificate of candidacy, and able to read and write Filipino, English, or any other local language or dialect. Lastly, we go over the ordinances since we keep mentioning them. What is an ordinance? An ordinance is an act adopted by a municipal governing body having effect only within the jurisdiction of the municipal government. We have two ordinances to give you guys some perspective. We have the Cebu City Ordinance 1361, Anti-Littering Ordinance. This is a nice solution to the trash problem plaguing the city streets. People need to know that their actions greatly impact the environment. This ordinance teaches them the importance of keeping their surroundings clean or else they'll get in trouble. Cebu City Ordinance 2031 Solid Waste Segregation at Source Ordinance It is a good ordinance since it helps our waste problem. It is also has a good impact on our environment. 
This ordinance also brings out the discipline in people since they have to practice segregation in order for their trash to be collected. As we end the discussion, we'll leave you with two quotes. Valerie Jarrett once said, When you are in local government, you are on the ground. And you are looking into the eyes and hearts of the people you are there to serve. It teaches you to listen. It teaches you to be expansive in the people with whom you talk to. And I think that engagement gives you political judgment. Joy Reid also said, Local government is a gumbo that can have disastrous consequences when it fails. So, choose your local leaders well. Thank you for listening and have a good day.